Yo, 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 what's going on everybody? My name is Braxophone and I'm bringing you guys another Genshin Impact guide and this one is actually going to be a full in-depth analysis on the character Jean. Today we'll be discussing about Jean, what all of our abilities do, melee DPS optimization, and what constellations you should end up shooting for if you're going to try to pull duplicates on Jean. While we are going to discuss where Jean actually fits inside of a team setting, we're not going to be discussing builds for her specifically because it would be unfair of me to give you information that I'm not fully informed on and I don't have all the artifacts needed to build Jean every way that I'm going to talk about today. So let's just get right into it. Jean has a tall character model which means that she climbs higher and runs faster than most other characters that are not using the same character model as her. Jean is a one-handed melee character which means she uses a long sword for all of her melee DPS. Her element is wind which means that she does share the same element as the default traveler and venti. So first things first, let's talk stats. As is standard for all characters in this game, HP is going to be the highest stat. For Jean, her next strongest stat is defense. I know it shows that attack is higher, but it's actually factoring in my weapon bonus. If you take Rancor away from me and replace it with a level 1 sword, that attack bonus is going to go down to roughly 200. Theoretically, defense should be a really high stat for other characters as well, just because you don't actually have anything that increases your defense except for artifacts, whereas your attack stat is buffed by whatever weapon you're wielding. Outside of that, her stats are pretty standard, except for one, which is the healing bonus. A little bit further into the video, and we're going to be discussing why this is significant, but for now, let's go ahead and move on to her abilities, because these are awesome. Her first and primary ability is Favonius Bladeworks, which is her basic attack. It deals up to five consecutive hits with each hit increasing in damage percentage, except for the second hit, which decreases a little bit from the first one. I don't have a level one gene, so I can't show you guys the entire ground up, but I can show you what I have at level 69 on my gene with Favonius Bladework level four. At one hit, it does about 61.8%. At two hits, it does 58.3%. The third hit, it does 77.1%. On the fourth hit, it does 84.3% percent and on the fifth hit it does 101 percent if you hold the basic attack button you'll use a charged attack and the charged attack damage is 207 percent for me currently but the big thing to note with that one is that it just does a ton of damage and the charged attack also as an added effect does lift people into the air and make them slow fall and we'll talk about that in just a second as per usual with charge attacks, hers costs stamina to use, about 20, her plunge attack does 81.8%, and her low slash high plunge damage is 164% versus 204%. Like I said, these are my stats at Favonius Bladework level four, so they may vary from person to person, but ultimately the scaling is relatively the same. Now, like most other characters, Jean does have an animation cancel that is slightly more efficient for putting out damage than spamming the basic attack. I decided to run some tests on one single enemy that could tank a ton of hits and wouldn't interrupt my combos too much. In this section, we're not looking for raw damage output, but we are looking for DPS, which is damage per second. We are going to see how each combo method stacks up against each other. I ended up testing four combos, but I ruled one of them out immediately because it was abysmal. The first combo I tried was 1-2-3 charged attack. I recorded two combos of this which totaled 4.71 seconds. In these 4.71 seconds we managed to do 2842 damage which totals 603.4 DPS. The second trial I did was the standard 1-2-3-4-5 combo which ended up taking us about 6.61 seconds to get two in a row of. The 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 combo did end up doing 2808 damage, and so you divide that by 6.61, and you are going to end up with 424.8 DPS. The final combo we ended up getting in was 1, 2, 3, and dash, and we got in three combinations of that in 4.88 seconds. This totaled 2,295 damage, and if you divide that by 4.88, you get 470.3 DPS. Just as a general reminder, we're not looking at raw damage numbers, but we are seeing how the combinations stack up in terms of damage output. I did end up testing a 1, 2, 3, 4 dash combo, and that ended up being so bad that I didn't want to put all the math in. But if you're wondering what the results were, it was around 350 DPS. Going off of the best numbers, it looks like the 1, 2, 3 charge attack combo would be the best. However, you can't charge attack every single enemy you find because enemies that are light will be lifted up in the air and untargetable by Jean. 
due to the roughly 11% damage discrepancy between 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, dash. That means, typically speaking, 1, 2, 3, dash is going to be the best combo you can do. However, if you're targeting unliftable monsters, you should be able to just hit them with the 1, 2, 3 charge over and over like I did this golem. That's not to say the charge up attack is bad on smaller monsters, and you can actually use that attack to hit them up into the air, switch to a bow or a caster character, and hit them while they're suspended in the air while they can't attack you back. This is especially helpful for Whopper Flower Kill, and due to the stun effects of the charge attack, you can also prevent big attacks from casting. One example of this is the Abyssal Mage Shields. When they're casting to bree up their shield, you can interrupt them and then suspend them in midair, hit them a whole bunch assuming their shield is down. The charge attack will not stun and suspend if they have a bubble active. The last thing to note for Favonius Blade work is that when you level it up, it levels up every single stat involved. The next ability we'll be covering will be Gale Blade. Now this ability is busted and fun in unique ways that I didn't think possible for a game like this, so let's talk about it. Gale Blade is Jean's elemental skill, and it grabs onto people, picks them up, and throws them in whatever direction Jean aims them at. This ability can be held and charged, but it doesn't do any bonus damage for charging it up. It just does flat out damage based on the elemental mastery that Jean has. My Gale Blade is level three, and currently it does 336% skill damage, it consumes 20 stamina per second, it lasts for up to 5 seconds, and the cooldown is 6 seconds. When I say it lasts for up to 5 seconds, I mean the charge time, I don't mean the actual effect. Upon level up, the only attribute that changes is skill damage, which will increase by a hefty amount every level. As previously mentioned, you can actually charge this ability and suck people in, and then shoot them out wherever you're aiming, which is the most fun and most productive part of this entire ability, and let me tell you why. The fun part about this ability is that you can throw people straight up into the air and actually force them to take fall damage, which is just really funny. But the really productive part of this ability is that you can force things into environmental deaths. Let's say you're hunting a Fatui Pyro agent, and you just happen to be next to, you know, a giant body of water. Check this out. You can just pick them up, throw them into the water, they instantly die. And this doesn't just apply to the Fatui agents, it applies to anyone that you can pick up and throw into water where they will die. The only characters this doesn't work on is ice characters because obviously they just freeze the water before they touch the death. But ultimately, this just makes farming so easy because you can pick things up, throw them off a cliff, pick things up, throw them in the water, and you just instantly have your items. You don't actually have to compete in a battle at all for your stuff. This is also extremely useful in Spiral Abyss because you can just pick things up on floor two and whatever floors actually don't have enclosure around them and throw people off the map. The only place this doesn't work is in dungeons because there is a fake barrier on the outskirts of the dungeon that prevents you from throwing people off the map. And of course on cast because this is an animo slash wind aspect and ability, it does kind of increase the damage of all the abilities that get sucked into it, aka spreads fire and all the other elements that get touched by wind. And on to the next ability, which is her Elemental Burst. This ability is Dandelion Breeze, and it is amazing. This ability does pure animo damage while also creating a Dandelion Field, which is basically an AoE that heals you and makes you do more damage. The description reads, continuously regenerates HP for one ally and continuously imbues them with animo. Deals animo damage to enemies entering or exiting the field. This ability is basically just big wind AoE, does a pretty decent chunk of damage, and if there's elements in the area, they get amplified. It's also a really great panic heal if you're in a pinch. Currently at level 4, my elemental burst damage is 531%, the field entering exiting damage is 98%, the field activation healing is 314% of attack plus 2041. It also gives you continuous passive regeneration, which is equal to 31.4% of the attack plus 204 health. The cooldown is 20 seconds, which means that you do have a pretty hefty amount of time before you can cast it again, and the energy cost is 80. When you level up this ability, it levels up all of the stats of the ability except for the cooldown and energy cost, which means that the cooldown is always going to be 20% and the energy cost is always going to be 80. We're going to talk about building around this ability in a little bit, but first I want to get to our passives. The first passive we're going to look at is Wind Companion, which makes it so you have a 50% chance to regen 15% of Jean's attack damage dealt as HP. This healing applies to all party members. Let the Wind Lead is the next passive ability, which makes it so when you use Dandelion Breeze, it regenerates 20% of its energy cost, which gives you a total of 16 energy. The final passive is not a combat ability, but it is very beneficial to have regardless because it yields you extra food when you're cooking 12% of the time.
Moving on to constellations next, let's talk about which ones are the best. Spiraling Tempest is the level 1 constellation, and it increases pulling speed to Gale Blade after holding it for more than 1 second, and increases damage dealt by 40%. This is a great damage buff, however, I don't think it's worth pulling Jean a second time just for the pull buff and the 40% damage dealt. That being said, all bonus damage is good damage. People's Aegis is a really strong party buff. At Constellation level 2, whenever you pick up an elemental orb or particle, all other party members are going to have their movement speed and attack speed increased by 15% for a whopping 15 seconds. 15% is smaller than the 40% for Spiraling Tempest, but you gotta consider that if you're doing co-op, you're doing combinations non-stop, and that 15% damage buff to everyone is massive. For that reason, People's Aegis is one of the better constellations on Jean's list. When the West Wind Arises is Constellation Level 3. It increases the level of Dandelion Breeze by 3, maximum upgrade level is 15. Leveling Dandelion Breeze 3 times is pretty big of an upgrade. It's going to help your damage and your healing while you're using Elemental Burst. Lands of Dandelion is a massive enemy debuff, where when you're using Dandelion Breeze, the AoE actually lowers enemy resistance to animo damage by 40%. This one's really, really good in party play because it basically is an indirect buff to Gene at all times and a direct buff to the ability. Outburst and Gust increases the level of Gale Blade by 3. I actually think this constellation is terrible because it doesn't touch the fling distance that you get, it just touches the damage. As I said before, all bonus damage is good damage, but for getting to the fifth constellation or your fifth pull of Jean, that is kind of painful. Lion's Fang, Fair Protector of Mondstadt, is another really good ability on the Constellation Tree. It's Constellation level 6, and it says incoming damage is decreased by 35% within the field created by Dandelion Breeze, which basically means everyone in that field is a tank. Upon leaving the Dandelion field, this effect lasts for 3 attacks or 10 seconds. TLDR, it slaps a defense artifact on you. Ultimately, I do think People's Aegis is the best ability on this list, but Constellation 6 is pretty strong as well. Well. All right, so now we can finally get to the good stuff. We're going to talk about how Jean can be played in any party. Remember when I mentioned that healing bonus earlier? That's because Jean is a healer. Her passive Wind Companion allows her to heal her entire party. So based on her defensive stats, her healing passive, and just how high her attack can get, she is a jack of all trades, but she's almost a master of all trades as well. That being said, min-maxing her will get you less results than min-maxing a character like Deluke who puts out insane damage. Because of her high defense, if you wanted to, you could stick some artifacts on her that raise her defense and HP and leave her like a tank. But she also has passive healing, so she could also be slowly healing your team as she's tanking all the damage. Jean can have an absolute truckload of HP and defense. But if you're looking for truckloads of damage, you could also just spec her all out on attack, because she does a ton of damage. Before I had pulled Deluke, I decided to spec her all out on attack, because I figured she's my only 5 star and she does the most damage. At that time, it was fairly true, but not the entire truth. If all the artifacts that I have on Jean right now were put on official, official would actually pull much higher damage numbers. But then the benefit of Jean is that if you spec her with all attack and some healing bonuses, she can actually sub for Barbara on your team. There's not a lot of casters in the game, but if you do have Mona, or if you really like to use Lisa, you can go ahead and remove Barbara, put Jean in with some heal spec, and then just have her slap people silly when you're trying to get healed up. Like I stated before though, min-maxing Jean is going to be worse than min-maxing Barbara, because Barbara is specifically meant to be a healer, whereas Jean plays like a paladin. So what is Jean's role then? It's whatever you want it to be. Jean can literally fill any role that you guys want her to because of how her stats work and how she has passive healing, and I think that's what makes Jean my favorite character. I can't tell you how specifically to build Jean because I don't have the artifacts to do so, but I can tell you that by min-maxing defense and HP, you'll make her a tank. By min-maxing healing, you'll make her a healer, and by maxing attack, you're going to be getting a little bit of attack and healing. You can build her as a support character to get your team to do more elemental damage, but I would caution you with that one because your Dandelion Breeze does have that huge 20 second cooldown and that might hinder you even if you have a lot of energy recharge. That being said, she is an Animo character, which means that she does work well with every other element on the table. I think the biggest and best build for Jean is actually the one woman army build because you're actually able to make her a tank that puts out some decent damage, but she can heal herself and solo every single boss fight in the game. 
Gene does a really great job of covering all the bases, so if you want to solo everything in the game, you can literally do it with just Gene. Because she's so good at everything in the game, if you put a little bit of everything into her, she's still not a bad character. She's not gonna be a one-shot god, but she's definitely gonna be hard as hell to kill. I guess the TLDR of this section is to just build her how you feel like you need for your team. If you manage to pull Jean and you don't have Barbara yet, build her as a healer. If you're lacking serious damage dealers, build her as a DPS. And as a side note, if you want to build physical damage, you totally can. Her basic attacks are going to benefit a ton from that. If you're running a bunch of other elements and you really want a combo, then build her as Elemental Mastery because she's going to do a ton of damage. So reviewing what we know, the biggest things to kind of take away for actual gameplay in this video is to make sure to use 1-2-3 dash on unless you're against a heavy enemy. The 123 dash does maximize your damage output because it animation cancels your fourth and fifth slash, which don't do enough damage to justify how slow they are. If you are against a heavy enemy that can't be lifted up, make sure to use the 123 charge attack because it just does so much damage. If you do charge attack an enemy and they are floating in the air suspended, you can go ahead and hit them with a bow or a caster and they are completely unable to fight back. If you're farming lesser boss spawns, go ahead and pick them up and throw them into the ocean if they're anywhere near or just throw them off the map. Same thing with Spiral Abyss. If you can, use Gale Blade to just pick things up and throw them around because it does damage if you throw them straight up and if you throw them off of something or into the environment they instantly die and you instantly get their loot. I hope you all found this video informative and I hope that it helps improve your Gene gameplay and your understanding of Gene. I hope it gives you some inspiration to play or try out with some different builds and ultimately I hope you guys are having fun with this game as much as I am. If you like Genshin Impact content I am currently trying to hit 100 subscribers on YouTube and it would mean a ton to me if you guys liked and subscribed and yeah, that's basically it. I'll see you guys later. Happy Genshin Impacting.